Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. It's sad you can't hug the way you want, but um, you can turn to your left and right and tell someone good morning. And for our online family, morning to you, afternoon to you, night to you, wherever and whatever the time zone is. We'll continue our journey this morning and I'm excited to be sharing the things that I'll be sharing by the Spirit of God. It's always an honor to bring the Word of God to this church and to the body of Christ through this platform. Spirit of the living God, we depend on you. You are the Spirit of revelation. You are the Spirit of wisdom. We ask in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, that you will help us this morning. We pray for our global family following all over. Grant us illumination. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. May your word come with power. Let it give us insight. Let it help us to attain maturity and stature. In the name that is above all names. Amen and amen. Pastor Dele, thank you. Thank you. I truly honor you and your wife. Please be seated. God bless you. doctrine we're discussing the matters of the kingdom and yesterday we spoke about the assignment examining the mandate of the church and our corporate assignment as believers and now we're stepping a little higher to examine the concept of doctrine all through scripture you find out that there was a formula that matured believers in the bible especially when you read the book of acts the bible lets us know again and again that there was an exact spiritual formula that was responsible for the maturity and the dexterity of the early church and if we must see the signs, the wonders, and the mighty things that were done in their days, we must subscribe to the pattern that they followed. Doctrine. This is the mystery behind maturity. This is the mystery behind stature. Yesterday, we began to discuss the fact that many believers get saved but the system now that takes them from that outer court if i would call it into the deeper things of the spirit is why there is a lot of confusion the body of christ according to scripture were a people who could not be mistaken every time you saw them you would know this was a christian because there was a common doctrine are we together now there was a common approach to their growth to their maturity but today sadly we have all kinds of versions of people who profess the faith and there is a problem because of what the people eventually become and sometimes as students supposedly under different denominations and different mentorship systems um, we are sometimes we get very surprised at the kind of spiritual products that are produced and the 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 factor to blame is doctrine doctrine is the maker of men in the kingdom please pay attention this is very very important what is doctrine i'm trying to be as simple as possible the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina let's just do a bit of bible studies it comes from the latin word doctrina and it means teaching it means instructions basically doctrine talks of a set of beliefs that are accepted and taught a set of beliefs not just random 
they a set of beliefs that are first accepted by a standard whatever standard it has to be accepted please take note of this definition it's not just a body of truth communicated a body of truth that has been accepted if you want to use the word standardized or verified are we together now so we're not just talking of a body of truth we're not even talking of opinions we're talking of a set of beliefs that have been accepted by a reference or by a standard and then taught a body of teachings a body of instructions so you call a body of truth doctrine the qualification for a body of truth to be called doctrine is that it must be standardized based on a reference if that truth is not standardized based on a reference it cannot be called doctrine very simple definition but we can spend the whole day explaining this that means a compromise of the standard usually will start with dishonor to the reference are we together now if there is a reference and the reference is honored it will be difficult to compromise the standard we can trust the graduate that comes from harvard we can trust the graduate that comes from oxford are we together we can trust the graduate that comes from john hopkins say the hospital the doctors there why because we did not need to know the lecturers that taught them we trust the standard are we together now that there was a body of knowledge communicated to them by whoever and we know that there was a system of compliance that ensured that anyone who passed through harvard no matter how high and no matter how low there was a minimum standard he would not come under so if someone came to you and said i'm a graduate a true graduate of harvard there are some questions you will not ask again because the name has already verified it's told you that a standard was kept we're trying to examine what is wrong with the body of christ and why believers fail to mature to a defined standard because the bible tells us that if a believer follows a pattern there is something he should there is a kind of man he should become and now as we look across the length and the breadth of the body of christ from we the men of god to those we are leading we see that there are aberrations and compromises on the kind of formation that the bible says should be so after 5 10 15 20 years in church under active church activities we do not yet see that formation it ought not to be so are we together yeah so we want to examine what is wrong the bible is full of the concept of doctrines please just be a bit patient we are doing a bit of bible study this morning and i hope you do not mind there will be lots of scripture media you would help me so that we we'll work together there are few scriptures that talk about the reality of doctrine as far as the kingdom life is concerned let's look at a few of them please deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 2 i picked out a few and then we'll look at the concept of doctrine as far as the ministry and the mentorship system of jesus was deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 2 it says let my teaching drop as rain please give me kjv thank you kjv thank you very much kjv it says my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew as a small rain upon the tender herb and the showers upon the grass he likens the doctrine as rain coming upon a shrub a herb what does it do to it it causes it to grow and it causes it to flourish next scripture proverbs chapter 4 and verse 2 proverbs 4 and verse 2 wisdom speaking now he says for i give you good doctrine forsake not my law three more scriptures isaiah 28 and verse 9 isaiah 28 and verse 9 
shall he paruski atabala katuzia? Whom shall he teach knowledge is a question. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? He says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Are we together now? That means the, the system that takes believers from infancy to maturity is the communication of doctrine. Isaiah 29 and verse 24. Isaiah 29 and verse 24. They also that erred in the spirit shall come to understanding. My goodness, look at this scripture. And they that murmured because of ignorance, because of childishness, shall learn doctrine. Watch this now. Notice that every time the Bible talks of the transition of individuals in the faith life from childhood to maturity, interfacing them is doctrine. Please keep that scripture there. It says, they who have erred in the spirit, they shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. Last scripture, Jeremiah 10 and verse 8. This is a prayer we must pray for the church and the body of Christ that God will help us avert this tragedy. It says, but they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. There is such a concept as the doctrine of vanities. It is not only the doctrine of demons. There is a doctrine of vanities. When Jesus walked the earth, our pattern man, Jesus is perfect theology. Jesus is our reference. Not only our savior, not only our high priest. The Bible says looking unto Jesus, not unto a prophet. In fact, even when the Bible says to follow Paul speaking, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. That means before you follow me, verify that I am also following Christ. If at any point you find out I am not following Christ, Stop following me. Follow me only as I follow Christ. Are we together? Let's see how Jesus began to mentor the disciples. Just a few scriptures. I'm just touching on it just to build my case on the necessity of doctrine. And that doctrine is the mystery that produces stature and maturity across the body. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 28. What did Jesus teach? Matthew 7 28 and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings the Bible says the people were astonished at his so what was he saying doctrine when he was communicating he was not just talking stories he was not just giving rema listen we have to examine the things we have been teaching there there is a set of knowledge, spiritual information that is not profitable for the growth and the maturity of the saints. Just because it is spiritual in context does not mean it is useful. They were astonished at his doctrine. Matthew 22 and verse 33. Please exercise a little patience. Let's talk on these scriptures. It says, when the multitude heard this, they were astonished again at what? his doctrine we see doctrine there again mark chapter 1 please and verse 22 mark 1 22 look at how jesus taught look at how jesus built and they were astonished again at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes chapter 4 same book of mark and verse 2 Chapter 4 and verse 2 of Mark. And he taught them many things in parables and said unto them in his doctrine. Doctrine. Mark 11 and verse 18. Mark 11 and verse 18. 11 and 18. The scribes and the chief priest heard it. Now, watch this. 
he began to teach the people who came around his meetings. He taught them doctrine, matters of the kingdom. And then it got to a point where his doctrine had gotten to the scribes and the chief priests. And when they heard it, listen, it says they sought how they might destroy him for they feared him. What made them afraid of Jesus? I will tell you, because the people were astonished at his doctrine. What created the fear was not the person. It was the power and the effect of what his doctrine was doing to the people. He was teaching them doctrine. And whilst they began to learn, the doctrine was changing them. And he was making them to ask questions the scribes could not answer. Doctrine is powerful. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. Shilabaruski adabalakatusia. Hmm. And they were astonished at his doctrine again, for his word was with power. Two more scriptures John 7 and verse 16. We're looking at the pattern of Jesus' ministry. If we must mature the body from a state of ignorance and infancy, it's not going to come by opinionated rema. That is just handpicked based on our desire and our experiences. There is a pattern, a body of truth and spiritual information already vetted and approved. That if communicated accurately, there is a guarantee that whoever passes that system will become a kind of Christian. John 7 and 16. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but he that sent me. I am a steward of that mystery also. The doctrine is not my invention. I was sent and sent with a doctrine. That means we have a right to vet anybody who said he is sent. Who sent you and what is the body of information given to you? You cannot say you are in ministry. Don't tell me he sent you with a message alone. Uh -uh. What is the doctrine that becomes the authority you have to mentor and to build? The doctrine is not Bible college. No. Bible college is your training to be effective in communicating that doctrine. Your Bible college edifies you, not those you were sent to. Doctrine. When we know this, we know what Satan is really fighting. Because many of what we think Satan is fighting is not what he's fighting. There are few things he needs to take away from the believer. And he can let you continue your activities. Because it remains powerless. No matter how anointed. Isn't it amazing how we protect anointing. And yet we do not protect the sanctity of doctrine. Follow me carefully. We have a very long journey this morning. If I ask the average believer in the African church today, choose anointing or doctrine. Before I finish talking, he would dive at whether it's an oil or a jar. When he picks that oil, he believes that he must be effective in ministry. This is why we are surprised. Because we continue to receive impartations. We have, res I hope you know that I teach from a standpoint of love. I do not teach from a standpoint of sarcasm. I am part of the body. Our admiration and respect for anointing, as wonderful as that is. Doctrine is a strange concept in the body. It's why there are manifestations without the maturity that maintains and sustains them. We have spiritual activities that start revivals like smoke and it evaporates and people return back. Manifestations of power, crusades, packed full of people. People get born again and the harvest rottens because there is no doctrine that preserves. John 18 and verse 19. We're examining the ministry of Jesus. And the high priest asked Jesus of his disciples and his doctrine. Look at what the high priest was concerned about. Not his miracles. There were two things that threatened the high priest. One, your doctrine. Two, those listening to it. 
I am interested in what you are telling them and I'm interested in the loyalty that is coming out of them by reason of what you are communicating. Now, this is our Jesus. You now see why his products were powerful. Out of, out of the 12 disciples who would become apostles of the Lamb, only one. And Judas was not a bad man. Judas was just a selfish man. That's why he could not spend the money. Most of us who spend it, Judas didn't even spend it. I think it's some level of regard for him there. All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost except the son of perdition, and that that scripture will be fulfilled. Notice the son of perdition was not mentioned. Judah aligned with that prophecy. Most of the prophecies in scripture had no names attached to them. So the spirit of grace hovers around a dispensation, finding the vessels that align to that prophecy. Are we together? So we see that all through scripture, doctrine has always been the strategy for building. In the ministry of Jesus, he used parables, but hidden in those parables were doctrines, precepts of the kingdom. Let's look at the ministry of the apostles because there is a condition for any truth to be called a doctrine. Number one, the idea must be captured in the Old Testament. This is theology. Number two, it must be manifest in the life and the ministry of Jesus. Number three, it must be manifest in the life of the apostles. Any truth that is not captured in the Old Testament, any truth that was not manifested in the life and the ministry of Jesus and was not manifested in the life of the apostles does not qualify to be called doctrine. Now, in light of what I'm teaching, we will respectfully look back, just, just like an introspect, and find out most of the things we teach in the body of Christ, do they pass through that test? And do they, are they standardized enough? Yet we have made doctrines out of them. The challenge with the body of Christ largely today is because as well-meaning as we are, our exegesis is largely based on opinions, encounters, and visions as wonderful as they are. They have not passed through the spiritual navdak, if I will use that word, that qualifies them to be called doctrines. So on one hand, the doctrine only, only blesses those who are called in that pattern. Doctrine should profit everyone in the body. So I can communicate truth that only profits people who are going into ministry. If you are in business, my message will not profit you. That's dangerous. Then I can come and teach in a way that you have to be a businessman to be blessed. Then I teach in a way that you, you must have lost your father and your mother for my message to profit you. If you come from parents who are born again, my message will, it will make you feel guilty. All these variations are because we are communicating opinions, well-meaning opinions, based on the mentorship systems we also subscribe to, and we have ignored doctrine. Let's look at the early church. Acts chapter 2. And verse 42. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And they continued steadfastly in what? The apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Look at the pattern again. That every time they gathered, someone didn't just get up and say, I had a dream yesterday. Everybody sit down. Get a pen and paper. According to my dream, I was in a realm. I don't know whether it is heaven or where. And you see, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. A lot of nonsense today is in the body of Christ, especially visionary experiences i can use my visionary experience and create a bible school with it in fact 
train people who now train others. So now you are made to feel guilty because you've never had any vision. You see that now. It is not a doctrine. It's an advantage that is based on the election of grace or your quality of alignment. But it is not a doctrine. And so there are many things that are communicated and continue to mislead believers. And so if I now know that if I am not seeing angels based on the theology you have taught me, I'm not matured. The logical thing to do is to begin to lie. I don't lie because I'm bad. I lie because I have to confirm. So I also stand and say I'm seeing angels. And if it gets so bad that while I'm lying, someone now falls under the anointing or is shouting, I can fall into that deception myself. There are... Pastor, you brought me to teach you. The rate at which we claim we see angels every day the rate at which we claim we see Jesus every day, the rate at which we claim we go to heaven every day, the rate at which we claim we go to hell every day, the rate at which we go to other planets every day, it looks like a proof of spiritual maturity. We are deviating to a catastrophe that if not managed, a generation will stand today that will not know what Christianity is all about. We are, we are fainting the line between Christianity and other religions we are that wall of strength and stability the average child today does not even know what it means to be a Christian Acts chapter 5 and verse 28 we're still doing Bible study Acts chapter 5 and verse 28 they rebuked them sharply saying, did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, help me read, ye have filled Jerusalem with what? And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Ah, this is someone who had died and gone to heaven. But there was a doctrine. There was something that the apostles were teaching. And it was making the people go back to these politicians. And say, so, this man, no, 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 we, we will revisit this case. This man is an innocent man. What is it that a man can teach from a small room and threaten a government with it? You didn't go to a radio station. You gathered a few people and taught them something. And yet the political powers are afraid. They say, we are not going to train you in prison. But please, among the many things you say, do not teach doctrine. I tell you why Satan is not afraid of us starting churches. All he needs to verify is what he will teach. If he knows all you are going to teach are just whatever else, aside from doctrine, you are more than welcome. He will give you the support, the backing. I'm saying this because the end time church, one of the things I will wrap up, I told you the final session will be the coming move of God. We will have to examine the sequence, the, the mystery of Enoch and Elijah. You have to study Enoch and Elijah as a spiritual patterns. There has to be a, a restoration of the ordinance and the precepts of the kingdom. The reason why we do not see the glory of God is because his patterns are not kept the glory of God always comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept are we blessed Romans chapter 16 and verse 17 Romans 16 and verse 17 let me just finish this scripture so that I just build on a few things and then we'll wrap up wherever we stop again this morning now I beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions an offense is contrary to what the doctrine which he have learned look at how he's he's telling them look there are a group of people causing confusion and this is not an emotional thing they are called enemies with respect to their disrupting doctrine not because we have any personal bias with them look at the bible's definition of an enemy to the church it's not just someone who is not your tribe 
it's not just someone whose personality is not the same with you whoever mounts himself as a resistance to doctrine is an enemy to the growth of the church he says avoid them Ephesians 4 and verse 14 let's go to Ephesus now Paul Paul is in Ephesus mentoring the body of Christ and now he's bringing context to their spiritual um, their spiritual journey and he's talking about the fivefold or fourfold as we call it theologically he says this is why he gave the apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry are we together until we all together as a corporate body we come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine doctrine is powerful the bible likens it to a wind that it has a way of shifting people and vacillating their convictions to and fro by every wind of doctrine and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive a few more scriptures first timothy paul is mentoring his son in the gospel now first timothy chapter 1 and verse 3 first timothy 1 and verse 3 as i besought thee to abide still at ephesus when i went to macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine paul was protecting the doctrine the sanctity of the doctrine if you want to be like this church you must adhere to the doctrine so you could look at a believer in ephesus you could look at a believer in macedonia and they look the same even though they never met because what made them the same was doctrine like you a doctor from unilag can meet with a doctor from ui and they greet themselves and literally can begin to talk or do some medical things the moment they verify oh you were trained under professor this you learned this but you hardly will say a believer come from this come from that and let's pray immediately use prayer as a reference we are two believers we love jesus let us pray the first shock will be the content of the prayer and what is going to be said are we in agreement on this hmm. someone else will be conscious of his words and what he's saying maybe using present tense or past tense to make sure he gets it theologically right to make sure that all his prayer refers to the finished work of christ someone comes and says that's nonsense i'm seeing the demons now as i'm talking to you i know what i'm saying are you seeing that now and all of them are believers and all of them have proofs this is what makes it serious where are we goodness first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 we have to finish timothy now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith by giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils i think we talked about this the first time i ministered here you want to get the teaching this is how apostasy is formed a deviation from the known patterns of god and that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one there is the corruption of the vessel himself but number two there is the corruption of the doctrine so the vessel can be wrong together with his doctrine but number two the vessel can be sincere but the doctrine is the doctrine of demons first timothy chapter 4 and verse 6 Shilabaruzia takabarandia salashed. if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister of jesus christ nourished up in the word of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained he uses his ability to preserve doctrine as proof of a good minister of jesus christ 
you are a good minister of Jesus Christ to the degree to which you are able to preserve good doctrine. Are we blessed? First Timothy chapter 4 again. Let's read verse 13 and verse 16. 13 and verse 16. Please be patient with me. 13 and 16. Till I come, give attendance to reading, give attendance to exhortation, and give attendance to doctrine. Do you know what that means? Keep reviewing it. Don't say, I've exhausted the curriculum, go back again. Give attendance to doctrine. Does this look like what fathers of faith used to do? When you study the history of the church, they would hold camp meetings for 60 days and sometimes talking about the same thing. And you are wondering, is it that these guys don't have anything new? It doesn't have to be new, but it should be fresh. The body of knowledge that matures believers is finite. You can hold the truth. It is the knowledge of God that is infinite. But the body of truth that matures believers is finite. The same way learning never stops, but there is a body of truth that produces a graduate. You can exhaust it, defend it, and you are awarded a certificate. It doesn't mean you are done learning. To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, oh To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. That's the prayer. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. It's part of the service. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. We'll see you high and lifted up. You are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. It's a prayer. That was a prayer that Paul... Paul was trying to teach and teach and teach and he got to a point where he said, you know what, let's take a break. It is for this cause that I, Paul, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is something he needs to grant to you to make my teaching effective. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 13. And verse 16. Can we look at it quickly? Sorry, first Timothy. I meant to say first Timothy 4 13 and 16. First Timothy. And then let's go to verse 16 now. We're looking at a few scriptures. It says, Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. Please look up. Can we read this together? One to read is projected. Take heed unto yourself and unto what the doctrine. He says, continue in them. For in doing this, you shall save yourself and them that hear you. He was talking to a man of God. That just because you are teaching does not mean you are safe. You have to still go back and review these doctrines. In doing that, you will preserve yourself and those who are loyal to the truths you communicate. You can keep teaching while you are deviating yourself. 
until you find out that both you and those you are teaching are no longer truly established in the faith in doing this you shall save yourself and those who hear you three more scriptures second timothy 3 and verse 16 second timothy second timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of god and the bible says scripture is profitable the number one profit of scripture is that it is the basis for communicating doctrine watch this the first reason why scripture is profitable is not because of correction it's not even because of instruction it is because it is the only authorized platform that can help a minister to administer doctrine then reproof correction instruction in righteousness And that's responsible for the maturity. When you read verse 17, it tells you that the man of God may be matured. The word perfect there means matured. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure. Wow. So doctrine requires endurance, not attentiveness alone. There is a dimension of the communication of doctrine that will have to go past the realm of attentiveness. You will need endurance. Ask me what people will be doing for 40 days, listening to a resurrected. I mean, when Jesus was dying, he was not even thinking about his exaltation. He was thinking about the remaining part of the lecture. As soon as he resurrected, he went, poured his blood. That whole ceremony was done. He returned back with speed. He didn't even have time to celebrate. Say, guys, let's go back to the class. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is coming. I must cover that course. What a visionary God. If I resurrect from the dead, will I teach again? Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. Let's be sincere here. The same way Herod heard about my death, he was also here. <laughs> Please keep that scripture. They will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, they shall heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears. That a time will come. This is a prophetic statement that Paul was saying. That a time will come when believers will not have the stamina again to endure sound doctrine. Once the communication does not resonate with their loss, they shut it down. Does it look like what is happening around the body of Christ? Titus chapter 1 and verse 9. We're almost done. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that ye may be able to by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers that means the basis of our argument if any is not just opinions it is doctrine isn't it amazing how that when you talk to non-christians they will raise a controversial scripture that will begin another debate and sometimes because believers are not matured in doctrine we now begin to also communicate opinions and at the end of it we veer off from what was the initial subject matter and we begin all kinds of bab vain babblings and at the end they convert you the believer because now you find out how ignorant you are you dapple into matters that are not within the curriculum of your training there is a kind of knowledge that is called forbidden knowledge yes that was the knowledge that was captured in the tree of good and evil it is not every knowledge that is needed to be known so someone will come and ask you and say okay after rapture what happens to those who are in the lake of fire now and you see it as a challenge and you are guilty you feel i must defend the name of my savior and my lord 
doctrine gives you rest so that you can ignore some answers and still not feel guilty all you need to do is check within the curriculum of the doctrine apportioned to you now you begin all kinds of arguments that don't make sense and eventually you will put yourself in trouble mislead those who are going with you vain babbling Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 9. That will be the last scripture. When the Lord opened my eyes to this mystery, I told the Lord to grant me grace that I was not interested in just being a celebrity preacher, but a communicator of doctrine. After this scripture, I'll begin to teach prophetically. So I want you to listen. 13 verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrine. Notice what doctrines do. They can move people. Every time the Bible talks about strange doctrine, it says it can sway you. Please keep the scripture there. It says, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which, should be prof which have not profited them that have been occupied, so on and so forth. Now he's talking about doctrines, strange doctrines. In 2016 or 15 now, the Lord began to put in my heart the need to introduce among the many things that the body of Christ should have, to call the body of Christ back to the place of doctrine and maturity. And the Lord told me that he will cause an event to happen around the body of Christ that will begin to cause men to return to doctrine. Please follow my teaching. Because a time came in the body of Christ when believers were no longer interested in spiritual growth. Rather loyalty to a man, to a faith, to a denomination. They, there was no passionate and personal interest. Bookstores would testify that their sales went down because people were no longer interested. If someone can pray for me and he can speak over my life and I return with results, I will be kind enough to bring the seed to I won't forget about you. You just make sure that we're in partnership. The Spirit of God started causing a shaking. Now, I'm teaching with every sense of honor, especially for our global audience and even people who are listening. Please understand that this is just a prophetic teaching from the standpoint of truth. The Lord began to do what he told me he would do in an interesting way sir God began to raise people within the body of Christ and outside the body of Christ or I would say for some God allowed for some God raised who began to challenge what we call status quo in the body just follow what I'm telling you at first they themselves made mistakes because of the way they approached it they did not know that the opening of their eyes to see this error was an election of grace. And so they did not approach their communication with love. They came from a standpoint of sarcasm. And so it did not even make the truths they were communicated, they were communicating to be worth considering because they already came with backlash against every other person who was not them. However, in the midst of that flesh and confusion, God was still there. Listen carefully to what I'm telling you. You know what God is in it because regardless of the limitations of men, it still does not die. God is that merciful and he is that powerful. It began to cause men of God and members alike to go back and say, okay, it doesn't matter whether I'm for Paul or Apollos. The most important thing is I need to open my Bible. And you will be amazed to know how long many people had not opened their Bible. They had opened YouTube pages to listen to messages, quickly make a jotting in honor of the voice that they respect and went to teach it for many years. People would not sit down again. The word concordance, you would not hear it again. The word Greek Hebrew lexicon, you would not hear it again. So this shaking began to cause members to ask questions. Why this 
why that not just that we are doing it what is the understanding and what is the revelation that is behind this and for many of us ministers we were shocked that we did not have answers we just created some some you know the intelligence around it to say look just but the truth is when we went back we said ah god we didn't know we had deviated this much one of the blessings of the shakings that happen in the body of christ was a restoration of the consciousness of doctrine it was a shock how many members were swayed left and right that was a representation of the quality or otherwise of the spiritual products if i will use that word that we're producing how could i be with someone under my leadership for one two decades and with a two weeks lecture all of a sudden my entire 20 years lecture you forgot about it something must be wrong with that quality of teaching it's like insulting a 30 year old woman and saying you're a man and she goes by mirrors everywhere and looking and says is it true that i'm a man no 30 years experience of being a female is more powerful than an ignorant person's advocacy of saying you're a man if that why didn't that happen to us as far as the faith life is concerned then came the pandemic oh the pandemic was a revealer brothers and sisters I sympathize with all those who really went through a lot and all together as a people we've gone through a lot but it was a revealer and it was a harbinger a warning ministers to return back to the place of doctrine because our opinions didn't seem to work again for instance the vacillations around this was it god that caused it was it man that caused it look how confused we were trying to interpret these things and yet we said we've gone to heaven every day we said we met angels every day where was the wisdom you find out from scripture people who had this kind of thing do you know the kind of insights they came with? Remember, I apologize. Don't forget my apology. Remember, don't forget my apology out of a sincere heart. It's a challenge to us. Doctrine. The Word of Faith movement, if you study it historically, there were people who... There were many other aspects of the faith life they really did not know and they did not get respectfully but in the matters of faith they stayed there the average person who came from those movements were grounded everything that had to do with the word of god the power of the spoken word the mystery of faith they exhausted that curriculum from left to right even at the point of death many of them did not give up their conviction that is worthy of salutation we need to restore doctrine back to the body of christ it is the spiritual system allocated for producing men and women of stature it is not impartation that qualifies men to be teachers of the word and to do ministry i'm telling you this you can get an impartation in two minutes but you do not learn doctrines in two minutes it takes endurance now let's touch on a very interesting concept discipleship what is discipleship we're dealing with doctrine this is a concept that has been um, it's not foreign to the body of Christ but maybe the understanding and the application a disciple i wrote down here you may want to write a disciple is one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrine of another that's a disciple broadly speaking that a disciple is one who number one accepts and then number two assists in spreading the doctrine of another so the condition to be a disciple is number one 
you must accept the doctrine you are about to spread so from the standpoint of that conviction you will assist in making it known a disciple Discipleship is the spiritual system that mentors and matures believers. Matthew chapter 28, please give us from verse 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 28, Jesus himself, when he rose from the dead, Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. Go ye therefore. Okay, and Jesus, okay, any, any, just start from 18. Let's take it from 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All authority, the word there is exousia, all authority in heaven and in the earth is given unto me. 19. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 20. It says, Teaching them to observe teaching them create a don't just preach to them don't just get them saved create a system of mentorship disciple nations colossians chapter 1 and verse 28 colossians 1 28 and 29 paul was mentoring the church in Colossae, and he says whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present that's the goal of discipleship that's the goal of doctrine that we may present every man to be perfect in Christ second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses it says the same not a different one the thing you have heard, the way you were trained, it says, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. This is the scripture that bettered our school of ministry. That the things you have heard of me among many faithful witnesses, commit it to faithful men and they will be able to teach others also. I wrote something down here. The course content for the believer's education is called doctrine there is a cost content there is an allocated body of spiritual knowledge now this does not mean visionary experiences encounters are bad no it is that they are only support systems not foundations write this down we may differ in many things but there are foundational doctrines that the Bible calls pillars or foundations of the Christian faith. That means that the idea is not to make all of us the same in personality, the same in modes of teaching and operation. No, that's not the idea. The idea is that we come to a point where the foundational pillars that represent the fabric of the Christian faith is preserved regardless of the change in mode regardless of uh, the mentorship systems if we deviate in the foundations it's no longer Christianity Hebrews chapter 6 Hebrews chapter 6 doctrine verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ it says let us go on to perfection not laying again the foundation and he mentions six dimensions number one repentance from dead works number two faith towards god verse two number three the doctrine of baptisms Number four, of laying on of hands. Number five, of the resurrection of the dead. And number six, of eternal judgment. We're not going into all of this. But this is just to let you know that Paul was telling them that no matter how you vacillate, there are foundations that must remain 
on shaking. This is this is really where we are getting to. We are getting to the the zenith of my communication now. The truth is that we may not always teach the same uh, modes of operation, our uh, personality differences, the biases that have come from our personal encounters, the products of our alignment, and all of these things differ. But in all of our communication, we must make sure that all believers globally are mentored after the same foundation so that no matter what happens these people are standing on the same foundation permit me now to borrow something that i want to read for us i had the privilege to be in the seminary and there was something called the apostles creed please listen carefully we were made from day one you had to learn it and to know it of heart now it's not only the anglican catholic and so on and so forth are we together now i want to read it for you um no bias at all for any denomination i'm just communicating it because in later years i would discover the power and the richness of what we were chanting without revelation this for me is a representation of what we believe any believer who does not believe this no matter what else you believe you are not a Christian you don't know a Christian just because you accept prosperity or reject prosperity no those are matters that the implication does not necessarily attack the the, the fabric if I will use that word but there are things if you do not believe, if they are not captured in your teaching and your mentorship system, it is not the Christ of the Bible that is being communicated. Can I read it please? Here's what it says. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Number two. I believe in Jesus Christ. These are the foundations of the Christian faith, Pastor Dele. We have to go back to vet because there are all kinds of arguments right now. And it's costly to assume that just because I am a Christian, we are talking about the same thing. We may be able to, we may argue about all of the prejudices that come around the body of Christ. I know that we're a body that is still evolving. But in the midst of all our imperfection and the issues, we must go back to vet. Do we really believe the same foundation? I believe in God the Father. If you do not believe in the existence of God the Father, it says, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The word one Lord does not mean singular, it means unity. Our God is one Lord. Let me continue. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son. But now we know that he's not the only son. Today he's the first begotten of we the brethren. These are foundations of the Christian faith. Our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, that he suffered under Pontius Pilate, he was crucified. Oh, that is important. Don't jump that. He didn't just die. If Jesus just died without crucifixion, he could not become a cause. Because the law is that it is in your dying on the cross that you are being a cause. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us, for it is written. It's a law. Cause is every man that hangs on a tree, not dies, hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham, what is the blessing of Abraham? Not cast and money. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. Might come upon us the Gentiles. Come to the end that we now justified. Might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Every version puts full stop after that statement. So the whole system was to transport the Holy Spirit into us. He died and was buried. He descended into hell. That is true. Hades, the place of the dead. Scripture tells us that he went to hell. 
and when he went to hell something happened there is that true apostle peter even told us that when he triumphed he also preached to those who were is that true that they were bound the prisoners in hell he preached the gospel they were the first to hear it and then he came out with them he did not resurrect alone the bible tells us that graves were open and the ancient saints they came this is the bible the bible says and on the third day he rose again from the dead the resurrection is a concept that brought trouble between the um, Pharisees and the Sadducees. So it's not enough to believe that Jesus came, that he died. Do you believe he resurrected? He is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He says from there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. That is true. I believe in the Holy Spirit. It writes here the Holy Catholic Church. There is a star that is written here. Because the Catholic, respectfully speaking, is not just talking about the Roman Catholic denomination. The word Catholic means the universal body of Christ. So you can simply say, I believe in the body of Christ. That there is such a concept as the body. I believe in the communion of saints. Otherwise, our gathering, it says, unto him shall the gathering be. Is that true? Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It says to not forget and neglect the gathering of the saints. That means whatever comes to indefinitely attack the gathering of the saints is attacking a foundational truth, a pillar. There is no amount of social media that sustains the power to replace what happens. Because there are many things that happen when believers gather. One of it is that there the Lord had commanded the blessing. hallelujah i believe in the communion of the saints i believe in the forgiveness of sins ah otherwise that that is the basis the forgiveness of sins otherwise what is your gospel what do you tell the sinner i believe in the resurrection of the body that one day the bible clearly tells us that with a loud trumpet isn't it amazing to know that if our hope is only in this life scripture tells us clearly because there are all kinds of doctrines now that are coming up as to the reality of the resurrection or what the bible calls rapture now there are certain concepts that were not used exactly as they are pronounced one is trinity the second is rapture however from biblical exegesis there is a way you can compare scripture with scripture that proves the reality of this the trinity and God said let us is that true the Holy Ghost comes on Jesus the Word and the Father speaks from heaven Trinity they are about to kill Stephen full of the Holy Ghost he looks into heaven sees the Father sitting Jesus standing at his right hand Trinity so we believe in the existence of Trinity not based on a visionary encounter based on the integrity of the Word of God which is profitable for doctrine this is how we make our defense then rapture there's no word in the Bible rapture but there are events the Bible tells us that it says that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night I think I've corrected that scripture should we look at it first Thessalonians 4 is that first Thessalonians 4 verse 1 please give it to us Is it first Thessalonians or second give us five let's see we have to touch on it yeah first Thessalonians 5 verse 1 but of the times and seasons brethren you have no need that I write to you now he, this is talking about the events that believers call rapture a quick correction I should use the opportunity to just correct something that has been a trend in the body of Christ and yet is not accurate from Scripture for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night it's been a teaching for many years in the body of Christ that Jesus is coming as a thief in the night to believers 
from the authority of scripture i tell you that is not a very accurate teaching because those who communicated it as well meaning as they did they did not read the scripture accurately next verse for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction coming upon them as travail upon a woman and they shall not escape if you are a christian read verse 4 one to read one more time wow <laughs> this is the bible he is coming as a thief in the night not to us the bible says the coming of christ will be in the similitude of the days of noah have you read that in the day of noah did the rain take noah on unawares? no noah was informed about it is that true when all the animals came god himself closed the door and then the rain came and the bible says it will be that day most times when we talk about the days of noah we just talk about it with respect to the nephilims and all the reimagines of the giants and the extraterrestrials that is a dimension but that's not the only dimension it is true that in the similitude of the days of noah all these beings these disembodied spirits will find expression again and they already are here there's nothing to hide we know that already if it is true that we are one with him inseparable by the spirit of grace why should it take us unawares then it means our oneness deserves to be questioned there is an exact formula for the coming of christ the bible says all of what we call the signs of the end times the bible says they are only the beginning of birth pains is that true there is only one condition that is given biblically it says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached not as a message as a witness that means god has no right to judge and condemn anyone who did not have the chance to listen to that message so the message you don't have to receive it but there has to be a witness that it reached you that means we can determine when he comes by the seriousness of our global evangelism are you getting what i'm saying now the bible says looking forward to and hastening the day of his coming so if you are tired of the mess around the world the key is not to say jesus come uh -uh. just because you are born again you are not the only one he loves he loves the world remember the bible says that imagine if the person who preached to you that you got born again now said jesus come before you were born again let me tell you this the essence of the revival and the move of god is to confirm the fact that there are many reasons why we know jesus is coming back number one because the bible says so number two because jesus went to heaven with his body the condition to be on this earth is that you must have a body the first time he could not come because there was no body look at the activity a virgin was needed a responsible husband who could manage her in spite of the fact that she was not his child are we together the courage to resist all the accusation of the scribes look all that went through for jesus to come so he didn't take any chance he went back with his body he doesn't need a virgin to come back again he can return on earth with his body the man jesus is seated on the throne So as far as the law of territory is concerned, he can come. There are things we have to believe. The reality of God. The reality of Jesus Christ almost all religions capture in their framework something about yeshua it is not everything about jesus that saves there is an information about him that saves jesus as a jew does not save jesus as a human does not save there is a message there is something about jesus that saves 
number one you must believe his virgin birth number two you must believe that jesus is god incarnate perfectly human and perfectly god you must believe in his sinlessness that looks easy until you talk to a philosopher These are the pillars of the Christian faith. It is, for many religions, it is almost inconceivable how the Holy Spirit will play the fatherly role of Jesus. In fact, the whole idea of the Trinity is a confusing concept that only by the wisdom of the Spirit would you be able to scratch into it. If there is a Trinity, why are there two thrones in heaven? Why not three? Because the third throne is us. You see, it's true. Pastor, I am concerned. And my concern is that if there is no restoration, the foundational truths of the kingdom today, respectfully speaking, if you want to teach it, many people will say you have exhausted all your revelation you don't have anything new again to share the appetite for new things and rema has put pressure on men of god there are so many men of god in this country in africa who are under pressure literally they sleep and wake up on youtube searching for anything that is new wow anakazo that becomes the message for sunday now it's not happening because we are evil people no it is the pressure show us how current you are in the things of the spirit by telling us that there are seven planes i just came back from a dimension in the spirit no one has gone to you know how vast the realm of the spirit is many should i talk about this now i shouldn't even hmm. do you know paradise is not heaven jesus said this day you will be with me the man on the that thief you remember the thief on the cross this day you will be with me in paradise many people have gone there and they called it heaven i hope you know there are different planes of heaven the earth is a minute fraction of the vastness of the realm of the spirit just because you were out of your body and it was not evil spirit you saw does not mean you were in heaven I'm, I'm trying to how how do i this is a we're matured believers do you know there are other spiritual civilizations the bible says while men slept it's in your bible it says the enemy came so the enemy is living among men the bible never called that enemy a man he said while men human beings were sleeping there is another species of people that came and planted this tear and left they have seeds too and they can plant are we together when you read like i was saying yesterday i'm only saying it because a reference was made to it enoch the seventh man from creation right he talked about encounters where some of these fallen angels desire the daughters of men you think these angels just came to beautiful women and say i want to marry you i want to have children no the women will not agree like that that's not how you ask your wife out you didn't just come and say i must marry you by force no that was slave trade and all of that but a decent matured there is always a system of seduction those fallen angels propose ideas they were the ones who taught people how to conjure witchcraft by passing through fire this is this is bible history they brought some of these things that empowered people supernaturally right and when these giants these nephilim races nephilim and they are not the only class of giants they are just the prominent ones we know like nimrod kush og the king of bashan goliath of god 
and all of these people but they were not the only ones there are people on earth today who are carrying human frames but they are not humans it's true they are not pure humans satan also has his seed salvation is only for men who came from adam i hope you know if you did not come from adam you cannot be part of salvation that's why demons cannot hear the gospel and repent the 24 elders the rendition that kjv put there is that um you know when they say the worship of the lamb they said and had redeemed us unto god no the rendition is they had redeemed them unto god you see that now those elders had been there for a very long time they didn't just arrive there and those elders are not just the departed saints of old no people had visions in the old testament they still saw those people they saw the creatures they saw the elders i told you that we are immersed in a dispensation we don't know how many dispensations before we arrived and how many more are waiting for us the word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations we are only one out of many dispensations past and dispensations to come that's what makes god ancient of days if he's only six thousand years we can't call him ancient of days because a thousand years is like a day so he that would just be six days it's not enough to be ancient from the realm of the spirit when god is called ancient of days it is a very deep statement because it means that a lot happened i hope you know once upon a time lucifer was not even created and god was still god and there was a program so what was that program lucifer was not yet created there was a day God taught about him because our whole scope is like he starts from Lucifer and ends with his destruction. No. When people like Nathaniel Bassi says, you are God from the beginning to the end. It's a very deep statement. Do you know why I'm teaching you this? I'm not boring you. You see, when you stand to minister the power and the grace of God, these are the information that stand as the support structure that release power. According to scripture, when Jesus was transfigured, he showed us how his spirit man was. Pure light. And that is the standard we keep pressing into. Man shall not live by bread alone. Every time we feast on the word, the revelation, there is a dimension of illumination that we have. Are we, are we together? That illumination is noted even in the realm of the spirit. They can see the increase and the growth. We will stand in the golden city in the new Jerusalem. All our hope and all our pain will be no more. We will sit at his table and cry, Holy is the Lamb. We will worship and adore you forevermore. Please look up. The days that are coming will test all that we know that we call Christianity. I assure you, the Bible already told us that our works will be tested everything that we know do our children believe in god do our children believe in jesus do they believe in the holy spirit do they believe that man is unable to save himself that salvation is an act of god's grace and mercy apart from our works of the law it is the gift of god received through faith there are many people today in the church who believe they are saved simply because they have been around but the bible tells us it is a foundational doctrine we have to be careful because honestly speaking many people are going to hell they are not just being around god is not the condition for heaven no the bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved in fact it puts it this way the formula the, the, the formula is in Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10. It says that who shall ascend on high? How did he put it now? 
and then he says that the word is nigh thee romans chapter 8 please but what said it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth watch this and in your heart so as far as salvation the new birth experience is concerned according to god's intelligence your mouth and your heart must participate are we together the word of faith which we preach verse 9 it says if thou shalt confess with your mouth not with your mind you can think with your mind you can speak with your mind but as far as salvation is concerned you will confess with your mouth the lord jesus and you shall believe listen if you believe in the cross and you don't believe in jesus you are not saved it's not the cross that saved men is jesus that saved men believing in the cross is wonderful but the cross in isolation to jesus is not salvation you shall believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead the bible says you shall be saved for verse 10 says with the heart man believes unto righteousness that is another concept maybe another time if god grants us grace we'll be able to do definition of terminologies sin righteousness judgment salvation what does it mean to be born again it's a very interesting concept because in reality there is a difference between being born again and being saved when we call people to surrender their lives to Jesus like we say we give our lives to Jesus the Bible does not teach that for salvation you receive his life that's salvation when you give your life to him is the surrender that leads to service offer yourselves as a living sacrifice is that true Romans chapter 12 holy and acceptable unto God he does not call it your altar call he calls it your reasonable act of worship these are the concepts that we must balance in the body of Christ so that when we send missionaries out when we send people out we are sure of the quality of the harvest and then we are sure that when the people are saved they can be grounded they can be mentored otherwise my dear people I tell you sincerely a time will come when many people will begin to depart from the faith and a time will come when global evangelism will die because it, it looks like we don't see the use again. Most people participate in evangelism simply because they are doing it in loyalty to churches and ministries that they are part of. Or they are doing it in loyalty to men and women of God that they love and respect. But intrinsically, the revelation that truly sponsors the global harvest is not yet there. hallelujah righteousness what is the nature of God what is the way this life that God gave man we call it everlasting life I don't know if it was here that I made that correction like pastor daily rightly shared it is true that when the Bible was being canonized and translated the English people did their best in the translation and because um, the Bible, the Old Testament was largely written in Hebrew and then the New Testament was a combination of Greek and Aramaic. And the context of communication, Hebrew is like Yoruba. One word can mean many things. One word, en, can be at, for, with, by, same word. So those who translated this, the institutes, they did their best to capture the, the richest essence of that word. And many of them were not filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember the, 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 this Holy Spirit issue we are talking about. We have to really talk about that issue. There is no hope if all we bring to the table is just intelligence. And so we find a lot of mistakes that continue to confuse believers again and again. The word zoe is not just eternal life. You may have heard me say it. Everybody has eternal life. The condition for eternal life is not accepting Jesus. The condition for eternal life is passing through the womb of a woman. When you preach to people, you don't ask them, will you spend eternal life? The question is location. Lazarus and the rich man, 
sin one when earth was over they were still alive is that true the rich man was still alive he could remember his memory was still working he said i have relatives please he was testy he could feel the impulses of emotion just water from the drop of your hand it was not a parable he was really testy and jesus said no that already is a message we can preach jesus said mm -mm, you don't need to come back from the dead again there are two principles that will work here there are the prophets and there is the law that anybody who does not pay attention to the principles already on earth even if something comes in the beyond it will still not convince them that should help us to begin to probe carefully many divine revelation encounters where they see almost every man of god who has served jesus christ in hell some of those things are and the vessels may be sincere but because they themselves were not mentored in doctrine i've told you that doctrine has doctrine gives you the coordinates for administering the gifts of the spirit so that no matter what you see you see them through the lens of doctrine before you interpret them are we together so for instance if we're rounding up now i forgot that this is a monday a morning service you can imagine <laughs> i always think it's a vigil goodness <laughs> imagine that the lord opens my eyes now prophetically and let's say i see a spirit behind this my dear sister now my interpretation wrong or correct will no longer be god's fault is dependent on my accuracy of the word and my establishment in doctrine are you seeing why random impartation jesus refused to do impartation he said i know you people sit down and learn impartation will happen after three years plus 40 days he did not impart on them to go and preach he gave them his name like I give you my ATM, it's not your own. You use it and give me back. So you can trust the fact that I have money. The, it, it was not anointing they used to do. No, 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 no. He gave them his name. When they returned with it, they could not do that miracle again. Read your Bible. Is there anyone who left Jesus independently and said, I now have the name. And went outside of his command. No. I can see this spirit and now if I am sound in doctrine I should understand the character of God and the way he operates that every revelation as far as it comes from God is for edification are we together so I'm not going to put fear in this lady now if assuming God forbid there, my dear assuming that I see that I just have a vision of a ghastly motor accident I won't come to this woman and say Madam, you are dead, oh, Tuesday. Mark, Mark Tuesday. I don't know, but may God help you. I will pray for you, but with what I'm saying, you're already gone. Now, it may be true. Watch this now. Because visionary experiences work like time zones. Some people enter morning before others. So you can peep how the morning looks like if you tap into a particular time zone. That's how visionary experiences work. Some people enter tomorrow before others. And yet we are still in the same earth. Geography has helped us to know how visions can work. There are people who are eight hours behind. So while other people are almost getting to afternoon, that's when some people are entering. That's the advantage of visions. It can help you. Right? But it must be administered within the boundary of doctrine the soundness of scripture honestly there is no hope for our spiritual experiences if we do not submit them through the sieve of doctrine the margin of error will be so high it will not glorify jesus christ even though the gift came from him now if i am if i have been properly mentored and i am sound in doctrine i will see my vision through the lens of the wisdom of the word as i speak to this woman there are certain information i will not even give you because number one i will be able to discern your spiritual level and know that giving you this information now you may not be strong enough to receive it so there are certain experiences i will just withdraw it and intercede for you if i sense that it will be profitable to tell you 
then I will be able to tell you in a way and manner that does not downplay the victory of Jesus Christ. I cannot downplay the victory of Jesus Christ over something. No, what I've seen, what then is the excellency of dominion? What then is the excellency of the finished work of Christ? What then is the excellency of the name, the blood, the word? Even if there is a legal basis upon which the devil is destroying you, a scripture should already give me stability, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. So I speak from that standpoint. I'm able to administer the gift and the grace of God with accuracy because it is bounded by a sound a, it's like there is a jurisdiction of doctrine so don't let anyone please pastors those ministers listening around the world don't let people intimidate you with gifts they should still sit down and learn doctrine because I think that's one of the things that people do around the church people come and because of their prophetic inclination they automatically exempt themselves from the mentorship of doctrine and they will cause confusion in that church even though they are sincere people because the devil sees the loophole in their spiritual understanding Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 the three realms of knowledge to know to be filled with the knowledge of his will to be filled with all wisdom and in spiritual understanding we ordain people today just because he prayed for someone or because he prophesied and we now say you are a pastor you see and that person is there and the devil is so happy he's there because there is a vast uh, there is an array of loopholes that the devil can choose anyone as he pleases so you find out that sincere people become instruments of disaster let me respectfully say this as i round up this morning we must not compromise on the conditions that qualify people to stand upon this altar and communicate the truth of god's word if a celebrity gets born again he's a babe there is no instant maturity in the kingdom we must sustain the courage to allow people pass through are we together now yeah if someone has been in error for a long time and he repents he's a babe let us hallow our altars once again and bring people who truly have been trained even though we remain students in the school of the spirit but respectfully speaking, we must trust God to, to stand with a level of maturity that can sustain and lift up the name of the Lord. The level of childishness and immaturity upon our altars, from sentiments to tribalism to every kind of a plethora of things that doctrine was designed to cover. We don't have to fight the messages whether they are right or wrong the messages are a resultant effect of something leave the messages leave the error don't worry about them focus on the vessels let's restore ourselves back to doctrine and in this school of doctrine there's no graduation we continue in them so whilst we are done after preaching from a powerful program like this we don't exempt ourselves and say have you gotten the teaching we go back ourselves once again let me refresh and you are reading Genesis like you just got born again and you are reading the finished work of Christ again and then the devil now comes to tempt you and say by now you should be pressing into deeper things and the Spirit of God tells you settle down continue in it I want to believe that part of the things that Jesus was teaching in those 40 days there were repetitions of certain things I will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things although ye know them and are established in this present truth please rise up on your feet we have to wrap up blessed be the name of the Lord from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends you're my god and your name is yahweh your name is yahweh yahweh you're my king and your name is yahweh your name is yahweh 
hallelujah we just have two prayer points this morning the first prayer point is not for ourselves the first prayer point is a deep intercession coming from a heart of love for the body of Christ we are going to pray one prayer for the body father restore your body to doctrine restore your body to doctrine more than opinions more than cunningly devised fables even from well-meaning people pray for ministers of the gospel grant us the grace to not be ashamed of the exegesis of doctrine let our appetite for new things revelation not not cause us to mislead believers help us to be intentional to return back to the patterns of spiritual growth according to hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1 the fundamentals of the kingdom that make for a solid foundation so that will become immovable unbendable steadfast are you praying for the body of christ all of you who are following please join in this prayer pray for your pastor don't condemn them don't call them names don't go around insulting people pray for them Grant us the grace, O oh God, to be restored to doctrine. That we will not compromise on the foundations, the pillars that represent our Christian faith. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The second prayer point now is for ourselves. It says, study to show yourself. Listen. I defined a disciple for you that a disciple is one who accepts the doctrine then promotes the doctrine a disciple is not a goer you are made by the doctrine then out of the strength of your conviction you become an advocate of it many of us may need to unashamedly return back to the doctrines of the kingdom we may need to buy some of these old books we have ignored to go back again to your bookstore some of you after this service you may need to rush to a bookstore and so i know they are faded i know the quality of the print was not there but contained in them are rich truth some of you may need to go back to study the gospels again afresh matthew mark luke and john you may need to study the book of acts again ephesians the pauline epistles add to your depth strengthen your foundation because when all is said and done, if your foundation still stands, then you really stand. Are you ready to pray for yourself? We are going to pray for ourselves. And also by extension, we will pray for uh, those who are following us from whatever nation. The grace to be established in doctrine. Please lift your voice and pray. The grace to be established in doctrine. The grace to be established in doctrine the grace to be established in doctrine the grace to be established in doctrine hallelujah 